English language since we are uh, now, uh, I think we're live and we're already have like 10 participants here. I think most, most of them is still our, our own community, but uh, uh, soon we will start seeing some other people joining us. So, so thank you very much. And so we have Stephanie also on the line. Stephanie, how are you? Welcome. Hi, good. Thank you for inviting me. I don't know. I have my video on, but I'm not sure if you're seeing it. No, we're just looking at a, a, mm. a very nice picture of you, but we don't, we don't, we don't have uh, the video. Oh, that's still. yeah. No, I'm. I it shows that my video is working. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Well, maybe, Let maybe try again. Uh, Paola, Paola is our our wizard in in all these uh, okay. technologies. So I'm sure she's uh, looking at all that, and and also I I, I noticed that Yvonne already. Uh, joined us. Uh, I had a very session with Yvonne on Friday uh, on different topics and, and just preparing ourselves for this panel today. Oh, oh there you go. There, I am. there you go. There's okay. Stephanie, there's Yvonne. How are you? How are you? Well, um, uh, before we start, and uh, I, will, I would like to kickstart this uh, for the benefit of those uh, who are joining us and, and seeing all these uh, uh, webinar. Uh, First of all, I want to uh, introduce uh, from Latino Leaders Magazine, uh, besides me, uh, Jorge Ferraez, publisher of Latino Leaders Magazine, we have Jimena Vivanco, who is also a very recent uh, appointee to the position of editor in Latino Leaders. And we're very happy because she comes from another organization that we also admire and we like. And, and I think Jimena is going to bring us uh, many, many good things for, for the magazine and for all the things we're doing. So. So with that, we would like to welcome you. And first of all, uh, you know, thank uh, Avocados from Mexico for receiving us and from, for, for sharing with us this story and, and hosting and co-hosting these because I think uh, this is a great uh, best kept secret that many people need to know every day more and more and more about what's behind this great, I would say, phenomenon on the avocados from Mexico in this country. So uh, this afternoon, we have the pleasure of having the, 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 the man itself, the man who, who has built this from the scratch, Alvaro Luque, who is the president of CEO of Avocados from Mexico. Welcome, Alvaro. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge. As always, it's, uh, it's very good to talk to you guys. And, uh, and um, I would really appreciate the time to, uh, to tell our story and, and have a nice, uh, a nice chat today. Excellent. Thank you. And then also we have with us uh, uh, Stephanie Bassan, who is uh, Vice President of Market Development for uh, Avocados from Mexico. Stephanie, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us today. And I'm very happy to be here and share uh, my knowledge and my experience of avocados from Mexico. Great. And uh, we also have uh, Yvonne Kinzer, who is the Senior Director uh, of uh, marketing and uh, strategies, digital strategies, sorry, for avocados uh, from Mexico. Uh, Yvonne, welcome. Thank you, thank you. I echo Alvaro and Stephanie's. Excellent, so uh, let, us, let us start with, uh, I mean, we would like to, uh, you know, ask some questions uh, uh, in general, uh, just to start, you know, uh, hitting uh, the environment a little bit with excitement and with, with uh, good vibes about uh, well, we're going to about to discuss and we're going to about to discover uh, many, uh, uh, many of the things that we're going to talk about. But, uh, and then we will just leave and, and hopefully we will receive some questions from, from other people in the attendance. But Alvaro, um, uh, very, very, uh, not very long ago, we had the <laughs> privilege of interviewing you for uh, the magazine as well, and and you you and your story appeared, and the story of avocados from Mexico appeared in, in our cover. And uh, to tell you and and the people who are watching us the truth is that I I got like really you know uh, in love with uh, the job that you are doing because not only I am a a fan of avocados myself as a good Mexican, but also I think that what you have done with with a with a produce with a fruit. Uh, uh, that is an import. It's amazing, and it already has transformed the the food habits of of this country and many others in the world. 
but we need to understand what is avocados from Mexico and how it was originated. And, and you have that part of that story, Alvaro. So uh, would you like to start, you know, tell a little bit of how was imagined for the first time and what was, what is the origin and a little bit of the context in which the company was created? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, it's a, it's a very interesting story. And uh, I always like to, uh, to start with a, with a little um, um, joke, right? Because uh, we're, we're avocados from Mexico, but the reality is that we're, we don't sell avocados and we're not from Mexico. And that's, uh, that's exactly <laughs> a truth, right? Uh, the, uh, the, um, um, the company that we represent is a, an 100% an American company that is dedicated 100% to do marketing and trade marketing for Mexican avocados in the U.S., right? But uh, if we want to have a nice guacamole in our offices, we, ha we need to go to a store and buy avocados. We don't see the fruit at all, right? So it's a very unique situation that a lot of different categories uh, uh, don't have, right? Um, so what, what happened? Basically, the avocados from Mexico um, were banned from the U.S. for 80 years. And wow. in 1997... Um, the government of the United States uh, started opening the uh, the uh, the doors to Mexican avocados again, slowly, um, state by state, almost to, uh, until 2007 that we got final uh, distribution throughout the country. So it so it was 10 years of uh, developing the U.S. market to get to every single state. Um, when when they opened the market, um, they needed to to have an organization that controlled all the the growers and and uh, and packers from uh, Mexico into one single entity, uh, because we were talking about more than twenty thousand growers at that time and around fifty packing companies. So the, the U.S. government said, you know what, we need to talk to only one, and they created one organization that is called APEAM, and APEAM holds right now thirty thousand growers of Mexican avocados only in Michoacan. And, and close to 60 packing companies, okay? And also, um, uh, like two years after they opened the market, they created um, a, uh, they made this program a, a checkoff program uh, through the USDA. So basically uh, that changed the whole dynamic of the industry because now the importers of our cows in the US needed to put 2.5 cents uh, per pound import imported into the country. Uh, and for that, they needed to create another association that is the importers of the association of importers of Mexican avocados in the US. So now you have a, an American association and a Mexican association playing together, but not exactly because uh, from 2007 that really they started development, develop, developing the market until 2000, 2013. They were using the same brand, the same logo, uh, but they were not talking to each other. And that was not exactly working. So once um, they understood that, they came together and created for the first time an organization that reports to two different countries and to the US, USDA or the government uh, at the same time. And that is us. We, are, we were an experiment at the beginning because it's the first ever association that reports to two different countries and also the government. Uh, and what we were going to do is hold all the funds from the Mexican association and all the funds from the American association to create different marketing and, and trade marketing programs to develop our cows in the U.S. And that's what our cows from Mexico is. All right. So, so, so we understand it's a, it's a, a multi-owned uh, company and, and your purpose is to promote uh, the consumption of avocados from, from Mexico, right? It's, that's so, the, like the main... 100%. We, we always say that we have a dual responsibility. Our responsibility mm -hmm. is based on developing a brand uh, for Mexico, uh, for Mexican avocados in the U.S., and at the same time, developing the volume for the whole avocado category in the country because mm -hmm. we're now uh, more than 85% of the U.S. market. So we believe that like a good leader, we need to develop the market. So that's our do our responsibility that we work uh, every day on. Mm -hmm. Now, Alvaro, you, you, you had a background of working for uh, other food companies like, like Mission Foods and, and you, you spent a lot of time there also. And you brought with you, Stephanie, when, when you started uh, uh, Avocados from Mexico, as I understood. And, and I want to now jump to, to Stephanie and ask her, 
where do you start when you need to, to promote and market a fruit that is so different from a car or from a, a bank services or things like that? I mean, it, it should be, in, and then also uh, in, in, in here in the US, we, we, we segment the markets in, in general market. And then we also have the, the different diversity markets like the Hispanic market and the African-American market and all those. So having something like avocados, where do you start? How did, did you do it? How, what was the, the basic um, uh, mission that you had to do and how did you start the first steps? Unmute my audio. So yeah. definitely um, it was a it was a team and collaborative effort um, coming into this at the beginning of 2014. Um, you know, it was Alvaro and myself, uh, first two employees, and then we brought on the rest of the team. And I think Alvaro has explained how our group is divided. But the way we look at marketing is just similar to any any way a marketer would look at marketing, right? Um, it just so happens that we're an avocado and in, 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 in the produce category. But you would look at it any other way as a marketer would. You would look at this the same way Apple would look at the landscape, the same way a Nike would look at the landscape and apply the same way of dissecting and segmenting um, the, the, the market. It's important to know, first of all, who are the consumers, um, understand what your, where they're buying, a little bit about their shopping behavior, and then understanding kind of long-term what the opportunity is and putting that all together into um, a strategy and building up a, a marketing plan against it. So, I mean, you would really look at it in, in any no uncertain term, the same way I would come in and when I worked at Mission and worked on the several brands that I worked on there, we would look at it uh, pretty much the same way, same way and apply the, um, the four Ps of marketing to basically look at and dissect that uh, the landscape. So, um, we started looking at it that way, and obviously it's been kind of six years now, and um, with all of the knowledge that we have and the data that we've collected um, about the shopper and our consumers, I think we've gotten more savvy on how to target um, uh, the avocado shopper and buyer. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of, uh, what is like the umbrella for, for the market? Because I know that marketing is complex, uh, has many different divisions, many different little actions that, that are all part of a, an entire strategy that is wider and, and more complex, if you will. Uh, but what is that basic thing? When I, when I talked to Alvaro in that interview back in, in I think it was January or, or early February, we, we, I, uh, he, and this is a question that I'm going to uh, ask. Uh, I... You, you talk to me about the product itself. The product itself mm -hmm. is a, a wonderful product that for you, you told me it's very easy to understand and to sell because it's, 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 it's a great product. It's a product that has many advantages and many features that are really good for these, right? So, so, so what is the, that big conception of the uh, behind the marketing of, of avocados from Mexico? Do you want me to answer that or is that for Alvaro? Whoever you, you no no whoever wants to, to take it, I don't want to. Our, well, do you want to that, take the big marketing concept? Yes, it's really your yeah. your vision. Yeah, so so um, listen, it, you're right, Jorge. When when, when we uh, talk about it, um, it is great after you have um, uh, experience of working with different companies in different categories to find a category that that you actually need to choose what to say because. You have so many things and so many good things to say that you have to actually choose, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what happens with avocados. There's a there's a natural excitement of the of the consumers. If if you want on the Hispanic side that are so important for us because they have that heritage that came that came with them, right? But also on this on the American side because they see this as a healthy, cool uh, product that is delicious, creamy, good for you but also relates to these big um, um, events and, 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 and programs that they have like, like football or Cinco de Mayo. And WAC is right now, I would say almost more mainstream than, than, than Hispanic, right? So, mm -hmm. so you have that, that excitement around the brand. So it's, it's what we're trying to do is to capture that and, and create a story. And, and that's why we did the Super Bowl because uh, 
when we when we when we started looking at different uh, opportunities how to how to tell our story and tell our message we knew that that there was a very important uh, link between the product and football it was the number one event of sales in the US uh, so we came into a Super Bowl and we said we're going to be a different brand instead of using the Super Bowl to launch a new product a new flavor or a new idea we're going to use the Super Bowl to create a story through time and that's what we've been doing so we started talking about first the origin right we come from Mexico we're the number one the number one uh, avocado in the US this is where avocados ca uh, came from then we move to um, to um, um, our main benefit that it's always in season because we're the only origin in the world that can produce avocados the whole year, right? The same trees that you can find in Israel or in California or in Chile, we have them in, in Michoacan, Mexico, but this is the only place in earth that they produce four blooms instead of one. So that was a magical thing that only happens in Michoacan, Mexico, right? So that availability was very important. And the uh, and then we started, we started talking about the benefits of health and versatility that the fruit had. Um, when we ended up the full story, we've been trying to use all of those um, uh, reasons to believe to create a message of value. And that's what we're trying to do in the last two, three years, saying avocados from Mexico are so valuable for these consumers that they will do anything for us uh, because we're healthy, delicious, and always in season. So that's the... The, the, the big umbrella that we're trying to develop with this brand in terms of communication. Now, we, uh, going back to Stephanie, that you are uh, the, the, the marketing uh, mind uh, there. Uh, well, you're a marketing company, but, but you are uh, in charge of that. I understand that, that you sell avocados uh, to, to distributors and, and to main, I mean, big grocer, grocers and food distributors, but also to individual people. So how do you, how do you um, um, divide your different markets or, and your different strategies depending on who needs to buy the product? Yeah, so, so actually, thank you. So Jorge, um, my main responsibility in the company is actually I oversee um, all of the, our trade retail, um, the retail, our retail uh, strategy and our landscape. So it's, um, my, my, one of my main purposes is basically I, our team or my team sells in all the marketing, trade marketing programs into the 160 accounts um, that, we sell, that we sell avocados in currently across wow. the U.S. And that would include, you know, from the Walmarts down to uh, Fiesta, um, and even uh, Costco or Publix and Food Lion, which are um, some of the major national retail chains across the U.S. But we basically, when we look at our, you know, our, our segments, we sell not only retail, but there's also a big food service um, component um, that we also um, sell avocados into. So the way we look at it from the retail side, we look at our general market retail accounts, but we also have um, I think Alvaro alluded to it, most of our heavy consumption comes from the Hispanic side. And so we do oversee and have partnerships with a lot of our Hispanic accounts because there is a significant amount of consumption and volume that goes through the Hispanic um, consumer. And then on the food service side, which is our restaurants um, business, they also um, you know, oversee a, uh, a variety of, of, uh, of operators, retailer, of, of restaurants actually that um, you know, buy avocados from Mexico and serve them and put them on the menus. So we actually look at it from a retail and food service. And then within that, especially on the um, retail side, we look at it from a Hispanic to general market grocers. And, you know, those grocers, you know, primarily um, are made up of, like, like I said, our, our mass and uh, uh, the mass market as well as our uh, grocery accounts. Um, and we pretty much have 100% distribution across the United States on avocados in all of those 160 accounts. So if you think of a retailer, avocados from Mexico is pretty much in that account um, selling avocados. Wow, it's impressive. And, and before we go to the figures that I know are, are impressive, uh, we have Yvonne with us. And, and I, as, I, as I understand, Yvonne is uh, uh, he, he also working on the side of creativity, how to, how to bring ideas on how to sell and, 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 and put together these messages, right? Uh, so, so, Yvonne, uh, uh, what is the, the, how do you, again, with, uh, 
with another perspective of the same question is how do you create this environment or this, this personality, if you will, for a fruit like an avocado? And, and, and how do you uh, uh, create it from, from uh, being a fruit and, and, and a, a diff, I mean, a, a, just a general product and be, becomes now like a trend and becomes now like a, something that is, you know, desirable and, and, and people like to, to, to have it and, 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 and consume it in the Super Bowl and, and then in the Cinco de Mayo and then in the avocado toast in, in, in the breakfast and, and I mean so many things. So how has this worked? Yeah, so I, I started with Alvaro a little bit after, you know, he created the company that was six years ago and he was looking for someone to build the, the digital practice from the ground up. Um, of course, six years later, we see that digital and marketing is kind of the same thing because digital is part of an ingrained part of marketing. So I work with partnership with Stephanie in partnership with the, the, the head of brand or the full service to implement digital uh, uh, activations within their mm -hmm. strategies. And also there's a piece that is created within the digital capabilities. So when I started, and it's so, oh, a story that I usually share when I talk about the avocados from Mexico story. Um, uh, six years ago, when I met Alvaro for first time, and I don't come from this industry in the past, fresh products was a new industry for me. But in the, in the interview, I asked him why, you know, he, he was interested in my skills if I didn't have any any experience in the fresh products industry. And, and he told me that he was looking for someone very creative with a good um, domain of the digital space that helped him do what nobody else is doing in the industry. And I say this as a foundation because that conversation became the DNA of what it is today, Avocados from Mexico um, uh, platform, I mean, uh, department or yeah. capabilities. So, um, but then, you know, being that said, creativity without usability is just not transformational. You don't do anything with something that is very creative and don't, and don't have or offer any use. So okay. we're extremely goal driven and results driven in our organization. So we, the way we use creativity is when we see an opportunity and we see a challenge then we ask ourselves, what can technology do for us to mm -hmm. help the organization, whether it's in, in shopper and trade, what Stephanie had, or brand, or, or food service, or in, in, within digital, to break through and um, uh, you know, remove barriers and seize opportunities. So some of the examples is when we know based on research that avocado, one of the main barriers for avocado consumption is the lack of edu avocado education. Then mm -hmm. we thought we need to have someone from avocados from Mexico in the store next to the consumer, guiding them through the selection of the right avocados. So what we did, we went leverage technology and created the first ever chatbot in the fresh produce industry. So awesome. through Stephanie's team, we partnered with Walmart and it was a first in market. And we have several activations like in overall the role of digital is taking uh, our message and amplify it in an exponential, uh, exponential way that blew up because we have the power in digital to take a, a relatively limited budget and, and, and increase the power of the marketing. We have done that for several um, campaigns, including Super Bowl, where we have been for six consecutive years. Um, we have dominated the conversation, even competing with the largest brands in the industry. So all of that, to wrap up in this answer, all of that has a purpose. And it is that while a brand like us dominates a conversation like the Super Bowl, then we really take that brand message and break through, even ahead of multi-billion dollar companies. So at the end, the KPI and the objective at the end of the, and the purpose is awareness. So we drive massive awareness of the brand message that is created in the brand space of the house 
Um, and, and the same is when we work, when we partner with food service or when we partner with sales trade and shopper, which is Stephanie's team. But basically it's just um, taking the initiative that we have and increasing the performance of those um, um, in, in, the, in the digital spaces. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, a successful story is always a combination and a sequence of maybe little stories and, and not all those stories are successful. Sometimes are, are failures or sometimes are uh, challenges that have been uh, uh, superated or overcome uh, to be able to do it. So in this case, Alvaro, uh, you know, what, what, you, what you tell us about this organization of Mexican producers and uh, American uh, uh, importers and all that, I mean, sounds easy, but <laughs> having like 30 something thousand producers and then having, I don't know how many importers here and all that, what are, what are the old, what would you say is the, the, the common thing that has been uh, kind of working and making all these people, all these elements to work in the same page to produce the results that Avocados from Mexico has, has produced? Yeah, uh, you're right. It's, it's not easy. Um, to give you the number is 250 importers in the U.S. And that's 250 companies, right? So yeah. we're talking about thousands of people on one side and thousands of people on the other side that they don't even know each other, right? And, and they all put together money into one organization that, that a lot of them, they don't even know me, right? So, uh, so it's a, it's, it's, it, they need to trust what, what they're doing. But um, I, I think that, that there are two, two elements that are very important in this uh, success story and why this work with these guys. The first one is that they, they set the, the rules very clearly. And uh, even though we, we're, we're reporting to 250 companies in the US and, and more than 20,000 uh, growers in, in Mexico, I talk to eight people, right? And they have a very clear um, way of defining that joint executive committee that is the one that I report to. Four of them representing Mexico, four of them representing the US. So the way that we operate is very easy, right? Even though we, we represent so many people into, into this, uh, into this co uh, company. Mm -hmm. The second big part is that they wanted since the beginning to do things different. And that's very unique in the, in the produce world because if you see most, if not all of the produce companies out there, they're, they're very tra traditional. They don't change. Uh, they don't, a lot of them, they don't even believe in marketing. And these guys came and the first big example is me. So I, I came from 15 years of, of selling uh, tortillas and chips in, in four different countries, uh, nothing to do with the, with the U.S. produce world and they wanted me uh, in front of the company. So they gave me the opportunity of creating a company full of people like, like Stephanie and Yvonne that they didn't have a produce uh, background and that changed the mentality of this company and they let us work, right? So uh, it's in, in six, more than six years that I've been reporting to this board, I think that only once, one thing that we presented in six years, they didn't like. Uh, after that, absolutely everything has been an, uh, approved. And they, a lot of the, 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 of the times, they don't even understand part of the things that we're doing, right? Yvonne, mm -hmm. is, it's, it's highly, highly advanced in digital in, 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 in the company. And, and a lot of times she's explaining things and I'm like, they are not getting what Yvonne is presenting, right? <laughs> but they trust Yvonne because in six years, we have seen so many successes with the company yeah. that they say, you know what? We know that we have a, a team of stars. We, we're going to let them uh, um, manage our company, manage our budget. And, and that freedom of creating, uh, that trust that I had since day one, it's been fundamental for, for the success of this, of this company. All right. Now, can I, can Yvonne. I yes, yeah. please. So to, to Alvaro's point, uh, the same trust, he transferred, he transferred that to the team because you know when we you are an innovator in the space and we as a category leaders we are the trailblazers for the brands that are coming behind but when you're going to do something that is new for the market is new because there's no there's no benchmark there's no um there's not a case study that proves that somebody did it before and and it succeeds so we're taking the risk 
And so we have to be brave and we have to have, uh, you know, a healthy tolerance for risk in order to embark in those adventures that, yes, at the end, and I can say that we have a very, very high uh, success rate for, for other reasons that, that uh, we can speak about for an hour is, is, is a structure of our planning process that is a very smart process. But at the end, it's still uh, taking the risk for the industry, taking mm -hmm. the risk ourselves. So when we break through, then all those coming behind have a, a, a paved trail for them to change the industry and, and market in new ways and, and in an industry like ours, fresh products that is behind CPG and other more advanced industries, in, especially in terms of digital marketing. Now, Yvonne, could you, is there any, any story that you can share with us on, on, on one of those specific moments in which you had an idea and you presented it and, and, and it was something that was very innovative and, and, and ended up being a, a successful one? Yeah, well, pretty much every everything is, uh, there's a lot of tension, there's a, a lot of creative tension um, every time that we bring a new industry because of many, many reasons that Alvaro explained before. We have a board of directors, we have over 20,000 growers, we have uh, thousands of importers that are trusting us. So we have to be uh, very responsible and as a, one of our operating guidelines say, responsible, ca responsible category leaders and, and be very mindful with how we use that money even when we are breaking through and doing things that nobody have done before. So every new things, I mean, the, the, any new thing is an unknown territory. An unknown territory are always scary. But um, we go uh, carefully with calculated risk. And I'll give you an example that it, co it comes to my mind. When we went to South by Southwest, which is a small festival in Austin, about mm -hmm. 5,000 people, uh, will be, or um, I will say the audience that will be live in the event. And we were having an activation in one of the spaces in South by Southwest. Now for a brand like us, putting those dollars into a local activation, uh, when we are a high performance company that we, what we do is we wanna maximize the dollar of our growers and distributors. Uh, we thought at that point, and this was a company decision, well, it's, it's, it's a significant investment for a limited audience. So then is when digital comes and say, let's figure out how we can leverage technology to take that message that is going to be delivered in that space with limited audience and just blew it out and deliver it instead to millions of consumers across the US. So we partnered with a company, um, Artificial Intelligence Emotions Company, Affectiva. Um, and, and I know that her CEO is, is, a, is an influencer in, in, in LinkedIn. She just published a book, very, very amazing woman. And um, we knew that in order to do that, we needed to tweak her technology. Um, and it's a technology that is launched, it's done. So uh, I personally talked to her and she got involved. So it was not only developers, she got involved personally say, let's do it. Because that's the beauty of working with startup. We are a startup. And if we find another startup that is as hungry as us, then we make things, big things happen. So we work for a week overnight, They're her developers and, and our developers, and we convert her technology to have a broad um, reach. So to make a, a long story short, what was supposed to be 5,000 impressions became 2.5 billion impressions wow. from a small activation in, in, a, in one city in Texas. And it was seen by every city in, in every house in the US will have access to our message that we deliver yeah. through that small activation. And, and, and that's brilliant because I mean you're 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 ha you're making a marketing campaign on a marketing from a marketing effort so it's like the uh, uh, a marketing from a marketing effort and and, and that's what is uh, uh, I guess brilliant in this uh, technique right right so and, uh, so uh, uh -huh. 
Álvaro. Let me, let me, let me, let me uh, jump in and, and give you another example because it's, it's pretty recent and, um, and I'm very, very surprised with it. And I think it's a, it's a good learning for everyone that is, uh, that is listening because of the situation that we're living. Mm -hmm. um, Cinco de Mayo for us is very important. It's, it's the number two event in the U.S., almost number one. Okay? Um, okay. And last year, we decided to create a new campaign for Cinco de Mayo. And we, we shoot those ads last year. And the campaign was making fun of doctors, right? So imagine having a campaign in the middle of COVID making fun of doctors. It was yeah. impossible that we were going to air that, right? So uh, the whole thing from one moment to the other had to be stopped. And um, two weeks before we stopped everything, and we were only a month away from, from Cinco de Mayo, I came to Yvonne and I said, Yvonne, we cannot do the campaign, okay? I need an idea. Uh, to do something different with Cinco de Mayo that relates to the situation that, um, that people are living right now, uh, that they're stuck at home and they, they have all these feelings together, right? But they still probably want to celebrate Cinco. What can we do, right? Two weeks uh, after that, Yvonne and the team came back with an idea of creating um, uh, a digital interaction that will celebrate Cinco in families, in their homes, with, an, with a very cool activation game uh, where, they will, where they were gonna create their own recipes at home uh, uh, based on a, on a digital tool that she created. Um, we launched that. Uh, it's, it has been the most successful digital campaign that we have done in six years. Not even the Super Bowl uh, gave us those numbers. In two weeks leading to Cinco de Mayo, we created six billion impressions with B. Six billion impressions for the brand, thanks uh -huh. to that campaign that we created in, in two weeks, thanks to Yvonne's creativity and the team. And that's how fast this company moves, right? Uh, yeah. We're a company that, and, and, and to, going back to what you were asking, right? The board gave us 100% the, uh, the freedom of making those decisions, of moving fast. I don't have to ask permission for that. They, the only person that Yvonne has to convince is me. And, if, mm -hmm. if, and very easy to convince with good ideas. So, uh, so we moved fast and we created the most successful campaign we have done um, thanks to that creativity and moving fast as an organization. Now, uh, to understand better this, this segment of the marketing, which is a digital uh, part, before going to, to another uh, uh, question that I had for Stephanie, uh, but later, but uh, so how do you translate the, the impressions, those six billion or two billion that you had into sales, like how many of that represent, how many more avocados do you, did you sell because of these many impressions or, or, or what, is the, the, what is the logistic be, behind that and, 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 and is, is digital really uh, that effective compared to TV and compared to other uh, marketing tools? Um. Yvonne, you want to respond or I can, I can respond as well. I can, I can just like give a, a little um, uh, kind of definition of the impression from my perspective and Alvaro can elaborate mm -hmm. more from his pro perspective, but impressions is rich and frequency. It's a combination between, between rich and frequency. So okay. when you have 6 billion impressions, it means that that message had been deliver to consumers six billion times all of those impressions were seen not necessarily but when you have six billion impression the probability that a, a larger amount of people have seen your message more times than than the ideal or or at the level of the idea of frequency is, is, is more likely so that's what makes our platform so powerful for awareness Okay, now, okay. It's, it's combined with everything else, and Alvaro can give you more of uh, some Hugo research that um, came out and showed for success. Yeah, I, I think that, that, a, that a good example for that, Jorge, is, is the Super Bowl. Um, when we did the Super Bowl, it's the same thing. If, if you go to the Super Bowl, uh, we have created in six years close to 35 billion impressions uh, in the six events. Uh, each event, let's say, a couple of weeks of activity. Right, so, so in 12 weeks, 35 billion impressions. That's a lot, okay? Yeah. So same question, right? Are we selling more or not with those type of things, right? 
Um, when we started the Super Bowl, it was already the number one event for avocados in the U.S. So it was already huge. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's one of those uh, dates that is hard to grow once it's get, it, it gets so big, right? But uh, since we did the first Super Bowl to the last Super Bowl that we, uh, that we just did, uh, we're selling um, 75, 175% more avocados than what we were selling in uh, 2004. Okay, 2014. Okay, so that means that there's a very important volume uh, co uh, component in all this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and why is that? Well, because those a lot of those impressions also are helping us out to create um, um, intentions for buying avocados. Uh, and we measure that. You won't mention a, a study that that YouGov uh, does every single year. So these guys come <coughs> in and they test the uh, the uh, 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 the percentage of people that are willing to buy a brand before the Super Bowl and after the Super Bowl to to measure the change and see which one of the the brands that participated in the Super Bowl uh, changed the perception uh, the, or the buy the, the the purchase intention uh, mm -hmm. uh, the biggest right to say well this this event really worked for them. Mm -hmm. Avocados for Mexico has been the number one brand in that story for four years in a row. Uh, so really the consumer is seeing us uh, and they're willing to buy more after the event. And we're seeing those, the, those things in the, number, in, the, in, the, in the numbers. I 100% agree, all the impressions are not valuable. There's a lot of impressions that are very small and not valuable. But when you have those numbers in those amounts of billions of opportunities, um, um, they, they definitely move the needle for, for a business and they work. Yeah. Oh, now. Sorry. One little clarification is that um, impressions is one of our KPIs and we apply when we have an awareness campaign. We want awareness, we want everybody to see the message and in multiple times to get an ideal uh, frequency. So that's impressions. But we also work with um, other more uh, conversion metrics like um, visits to the site to consume large format contents or even uh, conversion or registration, even um, uh, coupons redemption, for example, or using technologies like optical character recognition to recognize the the receipts, the purchase receipts, and and then we count that. So it's it's a it's a it's uh, KPIs are very broad and we select them strategically depending on each campaign. For Super Bowl, mm -hmm. it's definitely reach and frequency to drive message recall and, and brand linkage. So that's why uh, impressions are so important. No, uh, you, you know, one thing, I'm sorry, one thing I want to add is that, you know, Super Bowl, we, we make a big focus on that because it's the number one consumption period um, in the U.S. for avocados. But I think what's also impressive is I think Alvaro alluded to it is that after um, the Super Bowl, we also created a huge effect on consumption after the Super Bowl and actually carried that through so that we want to make sure that we don't lose all that consumption and all of what we're building through Super Bowl, making sure that we're maintaining it uh, post Super Bowl. And we've done a really good job and our numbers have shown that, um, you know, that we've had like 91% consumption increase post Super Bowl, just because the Super Bowl is kind of like the launching pad. And then yeah. um, the uh, my team, the shopper trade team comes in and really maintains that consumption period after the Super Bowl. And we've created actually an event after the Super Bowl to kind of hold that consumption in place in the US. Because one of the things that we saw is that the day after Super Bowl, our consumption would go down, would plummet. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I think all the job the team does from Yvonne's side, um, the brand team at the Super Bowl ads, they give us a really good launching pad um, for peak consumption in the U.S. But then my, you know, our job is also on the on the trade shopper side is how do we maintain and make sure we don't level off on that consumption and keep that consistent so that we can get to Cinco de Mayo, as Alvaro pointed out, as a second consumption period. Yeah. So I think it's a team effort in making sure that, that, it, that it's all um, uh, kind of maintained and leveled out through mm -hmm. from Super Bowl to uh, Cinco de Mayo. 
And, and in that sense, and, and this is a, a question that I have before, I mean, uh, some of the uh, audience is starting to make some questions. So we, we may do a break to, for Jimena to take some of these questions and ask them to the panel. But uh, before going to that, uh, in that sense, Stephanie, uh, I guess that the, 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 the measure of a successful marketing campaign is when you see numbers, right? Sales mm -hmm. or, or sure. whatever you, you, you think is your, your metrics for. But when you, when you transcend and do more than that is when you start changing the habits of consumption, like, like Starbucks did with the coffee and like right. uh, Coca-Cola made with the sodas. And you have also made something like that. You have already gone beyond just being successful and selling a lot of avocados, but also you have transformed, uh, you know, the way people see these fruit, these produce, and how they consume it. How have you uh, been able to do that? Well, I, I think a couple of things. So one of the things is that, um, you know, when we looked at our success and we actually looked at, I don't know if um, Alvaro said at the beginning, but we have over 50% household penetration in the U.S. of avocados in the category. And at one point, Alvaro asked us if we should go after the other 50% in household penetration. And we actually looked at that and looked at different segments of the population that we potentially could go after and maybe specific regions that we could um, penetrate and, and be a little bit stronger. But we found that the biggest opportunity that we had was among the current consumers that we could actually get them to buy more avocados and incentivize them to buy more so our focus in the last i would say several years has been really on a frequency play um and our and my job on the shopper marketing trade marketing side is really how do we keep that frequency up um and we're really looking um you know to get the um the uh the avocado consumer to um, to purchase at least three avocados on, on their trip. That's our, that's our goal. We want to see three avocados in the basket every time they go in. <laughs> or more, right? Or more, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before going to the questions, does anyone want to add something to this concept? Uh, okay. So, Jimena. Yes. So, the first question would be, with the usage of voice platforms and smart speakers increasing, what are your thoughts on voice marketing campaigns that can potentially reach the consumers directly in their kitchens? Yeah, we have been looking at voice for a while. I will say it about three years, but that's one of the things that we, like I said at the beginning, creativity without a, a usability is, is just a waste of money. So we're very mindful to how we use or limited dollars to drive uh, performance, performance and reach real goals, real business goals of the organization. So right now, boys um, uh, start is evolving, is being getting more mature is being um, increasing penetration among our audiences. So now is the time that we are evaluating uh, how we can leverage voice to increase performance. In, in what way? In ways that the, the consumer um, habits have evolved, the consumer consumption, content consumption habits. So people have less time to actually focus 100% their attention on a video. So we and we are seeing that uh, that trend accelerated for the past three years. So what we're doing now with voice is to bring in our current content to whatever the consumer is in uh, a for in a voice format. So we're working on that. We're working on this year and, and actually working as we speak in making uh, bringing all our um, or most important content of, of our website into a voice format. And we are going to start now developing the, the, the Alexa with um, Alexa tools to bring those uh, recipes and don't, those relevant content to the kitchen. But again, everything has been, um, we are definitely not late. We're just going to jump in in a time where it's still an important trend. Uh, it's a trend that is here to stay. And now we are going to leverage it to push our performance uh, forward uh, instead of testing and tr trying like it will have been years ago. And Yvonne, maybe um, following up on that question, 
Have you created any augmented reality immersive experiences for consumers to drive digital engagement? We had actually a couple of years ago, um, we created a, an activation for Super Bowl called What World. And within, it's an area of experiences within that platform, Super Bowl platform, there, there was a tactic with augmented reality using filters. We have been also, um, also using Snapchat filters for a while. Um, we're no, now, right now, developing an experience, uh, virtu uh, augmented reality experience in store uh, to bring that magic of the brand and the personality of the brand through the camera uh, lens in the store. So that's something that you guys are going to see within the next month. So we're definitely, again, integrating augmented reality when, where it fits in a way that will help us increase the, the, the performance of our campaigns. When it comes to promotion um, for your brand, what has been your most successful social media platforms? That's an interesting question because uh, one of the ideas that I try to instill in my team is that we have to be platform agnostic. So when we go to launch a campaign, we don't think about what can we do in on Facebook, what can we do on Instagram? We look at the opportunity holistically and each platform is a tool in our, in our toolbox. So depending on the overarching goal of the campaign, we handpick what are the platforms, what are the networks that are going to help us to deliver toward that goal more efficiently. And most times we have a very good balance and combination of multiple platforms, multiple technologies, and with that, within that, we make kind of a recipe, and I think that's part of our success. That that um, looking at the, the the platforms, the or tools in our toolbox in a very agnostic way, um, and and just get the ones that will deliver our goals in a more efficient way. Um, so, is there a plan to differentiate the avocados? of Mexico from other countries to the USA consumers, or is this really not real, an issue? I pass that to Alvaro to speak. Yeah. Listen, um, um, first of all, yes, it will be great because we're trying to develop a brand, but the reality is that we can't. Um, the, um, the consumer um, doesn't have the uh, possibility of choosing origins in supermarkets in the US. That's not how it works. Um, usually, uh, an importer will decide with the uh, with the uh, a retailer which origin they're gonna sell to them. So, if you go to a Walmart or a Kroger or an HEB, you will find Peruvian avocados or Mexican avocados or California avocados, but you never find both of them. So the consumer can choose. Okay, uh, we think that our battle is different. It's not there in the point of sales. Our battle is before that. We will need to uh, create the programs and the excitement in the importers and the retailers so they are willing to have Mexican avocados most of the time in their stores, right? It's not a, it's not a consumer decision, it's more a retailer and importer decision, right? The consumer, we want them to feel great with the category and I think that Mexico has all the elements for that. We have the quality and we have the programs, we have the promotions, the marketing, to, uh, to excite them uh, with a brand. So, so we feel like um, uh, as a leader company, we need to keep on developing the category, but always be mindful that the consumer, when they finally get that alcohol from Mexico, they have to have a, a great experience with it. Perfect, so last question. Um, going back to the Super Bowl, in your experience, what is the exposure and rate of investment, return of investment by participating on television broadcast? Um, that, this, this is a question that I get every time that I, that I do a, a, a conference on Super Bowl and I love to, to respond to that one. It depends on how you see it, okay? If you see the Super Bowl as a $4.5 million investment of 30 seconds in broadcast, you will never get your money back, okay? <laughs> if you see the Super Bowl as the perfect excuse to develop a, a company campaign, is the best thing that you can do in, your, in, in, in marketing. And that's the way that we see it, right? Actually, it's crazy, but uh, 
once we define a concept and it's tested with the consumers, I don't even care more about, much about the, the, the Super Bowl ad that goes into the game because that's not the important part of, of the whole uh, thing for us, even though it, it costs more than $4 million, right? But uh, it's the excuse that I want, the excuse of a great idea, a great campaign that can then Stephanie take to the point of sales and create a big Super Bowl and pre-Super Bowl and post-Super Bowl program and Yvonne can take to digital and create a digital program and, and our marketing guys can, can take it to PR and create a great PR program. And with that is that I, I deliver the 7 billion impressions, not with the ad. The ad is gonna give me 120 million impressions. So if I only see it like that, very, very uh, uh, unsuccessful. But if I see it as a campaign, I think it's the best uh, underrated media investment that you can do in the US. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is pretty much like the, the same strategy that, uh, uh, that Yvonne is uh, talking to us about that activation in, in South by Southwest that it was only watched by 5,000 people. But in the reality, with the old impressions that you made out of that uh, fact, I mean, the, the numbers explode, right? A hundred percent. And that, and that's the way that we, that we want to do it. We, we like those challenges and we like to, uh, to, uh, to play with those challenges. Yes, I remember the second year that we came into, into uh, the Super Bowl and we were looking for a different program and I, I wanted to see, well, what's the second most um, broadcasted uh, program in the U.S.? And it was the, the, the Thanksgiving Macy's Parade. Um, ah. So we said, you know what, we're going to go after the, the Thanksgiving Macy's Parade. And we actually had an activation in Thanksgiving uh, um, Macy's Parade. But the same thing, if I, if I only did the activation, it was 4 million people in New York, New York City that will, that will be with us. But I gave it to Yvonne. Yvonne created a program. And our hashtag for um, our program in, in the Macy's Parade was bigger than Macy's in their Macy's Parade, right? So uh, yeah. we dominated the conversation online uh, with that excuse. So if you see that, if you see a marketing program as an excuse to create a bigger campaign, that's where it pays off. Yeah. And, and not only that, we, we, the Macy's Parade was one day. Our campaign started two weeks before. So we engaged consumers throughout. So you, you could see the social conversation on the day of the parade. And the consumers were already so attached to our story that they will say things like, that's my float. That's my avocado float. Because through the activation, with their sharing the, sharing the content, they supposedly they pushed the float from Michoacan, Mexico to New York. So when oh. that float made it to New York, everybody, every consumer felt that was their float that they brought from Mexico. And that, that was priceless. So, yeah. so, you know, a two weeks activation like that. No, and, and I think that's precisely the part that is brilliant of what you're doing because you're, you're kind of uh, uh, inventing uh, ways of marketing that was uh, not existent before. Now, uh, I want to ask the three of you, because each one of you has their own niche in, in, in working for these. What's next? What's in the future? I mean, we, we have seen now that you have evolved uh, the, the, the campaign a little bit to talk about the value of the avocado, right? It's not only the, the, the flavor and all, but the value that it has. Then uh, we know that you just opened a restaurant in Dallas. Uh, mm -hmm. with all dishes made uh, with avocado, which is brilliant because it's something that you are also, again, putting out the advantages of this great product. What else is uh, out there that, that you can share with us that we will see looking uh, or we will see watching in the next years from Avocados from Mexico? Yeah, so, so if you ask me, my, my two words for the future, Jorge, are um, experience and mass personalization. That, those are the two things that I'm more, most interested in. Um, experience on one side, I think that the brand is perfect because of everything that I told you. It's a, it's a brand and a category that people get, get really excited about. And we want to create more branded experiences for the consumer. And food service has been our, our, our way of doing that. And we not only have our first uh, um, uh, uh, restaurant here in Dallas, uh, is the, the, the number one, the, the Polish casual restaurant uh, of avocados in the world, and it's amazing. Uh, but we have different experiences that we have created throughout the country. We're now partnering with the with the Boston Red Sox to create a specific uh, uh, activation in Boston. We have another one in Miami. We have another one in Dallas. We're creating different experiences with the brand 
that I think is going to be very good because it gives a, lo a lot of uh, uh, ways of connecting with the consumers, but also experimenting at the same time, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and the other part is this mass personalization idea that I, that I really love, that is how a, a company could take uh, a budget that, like ours and, and, um, and personalize an experience, a message uh, in, 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 in the most, uh, um, um, in, the, in the biggest way in terms of reach, right? So we can get to millions and millions of people that are exactly targeted to what we wanna do, right? So, so we're working on that. On the broadcast side, we're doing more and more um, digital radio campaigns that are 100% targeted. We're doing a lot of OTT, moving from, from linear to OTT to try to be as, as, more, as personalized as possible. On the shopper side, we're doing most of our couponing campaigns are 100% targeted to specific people that we want to develop for the uh, category because like uh, Stephanie was saying, our goal is to try to uh, create more frequency on the people that are already buying. So we're going after those lab consumers, uh, after those consumers that are not buying those three avocados that we want, uh, mm -hmm. but in a massive way, right? Uh, and then, of course, it's, it's digital, right? And, and we've been creating with digital a lot of different experiences to try to personalize by the millions uh, um, uh, activations through email, through platforms, through campaigns, to be sure that at the end we create a base of consumers uh, that is like our own database. So at some point we can, we can have our own um, um, uh, network of consumers that we can go directly or use them through, um, through that network to create more um, uh, communication and, uh, and consumption in the future. So that, that idea of being personalized by the millions, 100% that's the future that I think that we're gonna go. And then be, uh, besides uh, that, I will say, you know, well, first of all, if I tell you exactly what's next right now, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm late. So I probably don't know what is that answer and we move very, very fast. But in like a, a, the big picture, um, there's additionally to what Alvaro says, data personalization, consumer insights coming from digital. There's one area that we, um, somebody in the fresh products industry is going, it has to blaze the e-commerce trail. We have been so far um, there, like an example is that we have been the first brand in history to customize a product page, um, the first fresh product brand in history, customize a product page in walmart.com, for example. So that is the beginning of our e-commerce journey and blazing that trail for products, brands that are coming um, after. Um, then, then on the other area that I have been seeing where there's room for improvement is content marketing. Um, compared to everything else that is going on and all the technology advancement, you see that the content marketing is a little bit stagnant. So we have been working on ways that how we can take that to the next level and doing something that nobody is doing. So that's a, that's a surprise. We're going to launch something. Um, the strategy is being developed and we're, um, we're going to launch something this year, but it's like using content marketing in a way that no other brand is using it. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, all that is tied to what Alvaro says or consumer data platform that is giving us real-time insight on what the consumers want at that change by the minute. So that's why what I'm telling you is we don't know yet what's next, but at every moment we're going to have that information updated. Great. Stephanie, do you have yeah. something to add? Yeah, and the, the only thing I would add is like on our retail um, shopper marketing side, you know, one of the things that we have a real big focus on is the omni going after the omni-channel shopper. And as you know, um, that shopper does not shop only in one place. It's not just brick and mortar. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're also breaking the boundaries in produce and looking at ways where we can capture those sales, not only in store, but also online, um, specifically on, in grocery pickup and in delivery and in those channels as they get especially much stronger now given these challenging times, we've seen a big uh, increase in the way consumers are shopping now. And that if we, if we wanna get with the future, that is the future, right? Is, is the online piece and understanding that and making sure that we have a, pro a presence and are, are first in that area and produce. So we, we just kind of um, 
started. And I think we have a lot of opportunity. You know, we've done some work with Walmart and Kroger in that space, but I think obviously as other shoppers, I mean, other retailers get on the omni-channel um, um, boat, uh, you know, we want to partner with them and make sure that we have presence um, in an omni-channel way uh, in, in all of our retail, with all of our retail partners. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so uh, I think we, we, we have gone through many, many things. I don't know if you have any else to, anything else to add before we close uh, uh, the panel and, 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 uh, and uh, any other comment? No, I think that, uh, first of all, thank you guys for the opportunity. Uh, uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and, 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 uh, and all the Latino uh, leaders uh, community um, and, and, and share this, this story, right? I, I think that, that the, the biggest message that we, that we want to deliver as a, as a company is that it doesn't matter what type of product you, you have, right? We're a single product, just one SKU, no brand, no packaging, uh, but, but with creativity, with a, with a very good um, team of people behind it and great ideas, you can do marketing for, for anything. And now that single fruit without a brand and without a packaging six years ago is competing in the, the biggest uh, stages with the Coca-Colas and Pepsis and, and Bud Light. So, so you can do it. I think that if yeah. you find the right tools, uh, it's, it's possible. That, 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 that's the beauty of mar marketing, definitely. And, and I, think, I think that you, you have made a great job. Uh, you know, it's not only the fruit, but the, the, the conception that the Hispanic community feels emotionally attached to, to these products that is from a Latin American country, a neighbor uh, to the US, Mexico. I mean, many of us coming from, from, uh, from there. And, 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 and it has this component that at some point is a, a successful uh, story for the Latino community in the U.S., if you will, I mean, it's, it's not it's not someone, but it's something that has you know conquered the taste and the and the love of the American people, and that's uh, very difficult to do. But it's uh, it's something that you should be very proud. Uh -huh. And uh, well, uh, I, I just want to say to our our audience that we we just published uh, uh, this story in which you will find more data, more you know, more, uh, more uh, da uh, data like facts and figures and numbers uh, in that story. And there's always the website of Avocados for Mexico as well as ours. So, so I think we were leaving uh, uh, in the table, on the table, a lot of uh, uh, potential uh, themes or, or topics to develop in the future. So, but for now, thank you, uh, Stephanie, for for the work that you're doing and for joining us. Thank you, Yvonne, for also for your ideas. And Alvaro, thank you very much for the effort that you're putting out there. And if there's something, something else that we can do to help, please let us know. We will be happy to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.